Thank you. Thank you very much. And this is uh, an amazing event to have hundreds of people here discussing the situation in Latin America and showing real solidarity. So thank you all for coming and please value the work of the World Transformed in providing us with the space and the opportunity to have these kind of discussions, which are too often denied in other places because we need those. But I also ask you, don't treat this as an afternoon out or an exercise in academic discourse about the situation in Latin America, fascinating as it all is from the presentational point of view, treat it as an opportunity to better understand what is happening in all across Latin America as a process, but above all, treat it as an opportunity for acts of support and solidarity for those newly elected left governments across Latin America who've got hell coming with a handcart to attack them for the economic injustice they are trying to right. We have to give our solidarity to them. <laughs> and what I would also say is that a big thank you to those people in many solidarity campaigns over many years who have worked with comrades from Latin America. The Chile Solidarity Campaign formed immediately after the coup in 1973, Justice for Colombia, and many, many other groups that have done so much over a long period, including the annual Latin America Conference normally held at the TUC, which has shown an opportunity for that solidarity to be expressed. And so, I hope we can just think for a moment of the amazing achievements that have happened. And I will be brief on this. Uh, Chile is part of, if you like, a 50-year cycle of um, hope, repression, murder, killing, hope, and finally, a pathway, I hope, which will lead to a more egalitarian and socialist future. But none of that is a given. The hopes of those that managed to elect the Popular Unity Government in 1973. And you just think back to that time, every one of their neighboring countries was a military dictatorship. The US was at their throats from day one, and the elite and oligarchs and military forces of Chile were funded covertly by the CIA in the United States to destroy that Popular Unity Government. Allende was elected with less than 40% of the vote, became president on the vote of Congress, and governed in every way that he possibly could by mobilizing people in their hundreds of thousands in support of the government. The blockade brought about shortages, brought about food problems, brought about every other kind of problem, but the working class community still stayed loyal to the Allende government. And so until the iron heel of the military came down on them, and thousands were murdered, and thousands came into exile. And I want to say thank you to all those Chileans that made their home in this country and have made such a massive contribution to our labor movement by their presence here during the years since that coup. <clears throat> and uh, I've been to Chile many times, and uh, on the last visit, I was um, doing a film with um, Pablo's mother, Cristina Navretti, at Villa Grimaldi, which was the torture center in Santiago. And she was very brave. She walked around the site and described the methods of torture in each particular building of what she went through and what so many others went through. That is the lived experience of many, many people. And so the election of Gabriel Boric as the new president was a very, very important turning point. He wasn't expecting to win unnecessarily because of the uh, whole voting system and the um, way the media were attacking him and others. But nevertheless, he did win, and I was there for the inauguration, and it was a joyous occasion. A joyous occasion when he walked to the Moneda Palace and stopped and bowed in the statue of Salvador Allende on his way in, a lovely gesture. But that government, has a huge responsibility now on it. To give rights and justice to the indigenous people, 
to give rights and justice to the women of Chile and try to develop a political system that is truly democratic. The referendum on the new constitution was lost. We'll now come back to that again, and I guess Pablo will know more about that than me and will say something about it. But it is a battle for democracy, for social justice, and ideas that has to be at the center of that. Our solidarity is needed. And just across the border in Bolivia, think of the achievements of the movement towards socialism in first of all winning the election in which Evo Morales became the president. Originally his campaign started against water privatization in Cochabamba and that built up to the massive campaign that finally got him and others elected into office and a constitution that guaranteed indigenous rights, linguistic rights, environmental rights, and above all, social justice through access to health and education and housing and all those things. And then the lawfare, lawfare coup that was mounted against him, just as much as it's been mounted against Dilma and Lula in Brazil, removed him from office. And thank you to President AMLO in Mexico for providing a plane to get him out of Bolivia urgently and quickly to save his life in order to go back and campaign again. And Mass went back and campaigned again and won that election and are back in office. Well done them. They need our support and they need our solidarity. <laughs> and there is hope across Latin America when you have powerful voices that will speak out in solidarity with others. And I wanted to pay a particular thank you to President Lopez Obrador in Mexico, not just for his support for Bolivia, but also his very public and very open support for another political prisoner. He invited me to take part in the Manera, his very long daily news conference. It lasts about two hours on a short day. And um, he invited me onto the stage to sit with him and talk to him about a political prisoner in Britain, Julian Assange. And he gave his support for Julian Assange and has offered Julian Assange citizenship and safety in Mexico if that is what he eventually wants at any one time. And so I tell you all this because it's important <coughs> to approach it all with a sense of hope of the achievements that have been made. The achievements have been made in so many countries. And the election result in Colombia was to me wonderful and actually a surprise because I was there for the first round of the election. It was the second time I've been in Colombia. We went to polling stations in various parts of Bogota, the richest parts to the poorest parts. And what impressed me in the poorest parts was the numbers of young women who were turning out to vote for Petro and Francia. The numbers that were turning out to support the left ticket there and uh, very enthusiastic about doing so. The result on the first round was not as good as everyone expected by any manner of means and we left actually slightly depressed, but I sort of thought, I hoped, mobilize young people, particularly young men, on social media to get out and vote on the second round. And they did, and the election result has been achieved. But remember all those that have been killed and murdered in Colombia over many decades, those that fought for land rights, those that fought against mining companies destroying people's farms and hopes and homes. And I've never forgotten on a previous delegation with Justice for Colombia going to a farm workers union quarterly meeting where we had a report from each region. The report was how many union representatives had been murdered during those three months for standing up for farmers' rights. And on the day before the election, we had a very interesting meeting with a group of um, campaigners, trade unionists, land rights campaigners, all sorts of people. And we also had a meeting with a lot of young people, gig workers working for the equivalent of Uber in Bogota trying to organize unions. So I said to them, what happens after the election on Sunday? And they said, well, if we lose the election, we'll go out and campaign for union rights, for labor rights, for land rights, for environmental sustainability, and to give hope, particularly to young women in Colombian society. I said, great, good. What happens if you win? 
He said we'd go out and campaign for land rights, for labor rights, for trade union rights, for women's rights, and workers' rights in exactly the same way. Because winning an election is one step. It doesn't bring all the changes. And so, obviously, we wish the government well. But to transition the economy away from a fossil fuel-based, um, multinationally owned economy to something that is locally based, environmentally sustainable, and gives respect to indigenous communities and land rights to all those that have had their, la had their land stolen from them, and to give hope to the urban poor in Bogota and the other cities is a huge task and a huge ask. They need our support and our solidarity in doing that, and they need trade relations with Europe and Britain and the United States that are not penurious against the people of Colombia, but supportive of them as they transition their economy into something that is environmentally sustainable, which I guess is what we would all want for them. Next week, uh, the election will take place in Brazil. Lula is doing incredibly well in the polls and incredibly well in the campaigning. But you just have to look at the amount of money that's poured into Bolsonaro, look at the amount of money that's gone into the media there, and the film show that we've been showing about the coup that took place against Dilma and the imprisonment of Lula earlier on. It's an achievement to get to the state of having an election where Lula could even be a candidate to fight to win back the presidency. But you're saying is absolutely right. Since Bolsonaro became president, the Amazon has burnt, the poor have starved, the land has been stolen, and the hopes of a whole generation of young people have been dashed by this uh, naked, horrible populism of Bolsonaro that actually offers nothing in terms of um, social change. He's like Donald Trump, but not quite as articulate as Trump in the way that he puts the stuff forward. But what we have to do is show our support and our solidarity for them. And that means mobilizing within all our communities, but also looking at the bigger picture in Latin America. Do not allow the sanctioned strategy of Europe and the United States to strangle the economies of Cuba and Venezuela and elsewhere. What we need is solidarity with the people of Latin America that they can decide their own course and their own future in our society. And I'll finish on this point. Many Latin American people have made their homes um, in Britain and in Europe. Some because they wanted to, some because they're political refugees, some because they had no viable economic alternative. Many of those work in the gig economy, work in badly paid industries, work in under-unionized places, and are grotesquely exploited. All those young women that are cleaners in offices in London and all the major cities from Colombia and Ecuador and Bolivia and other countries, the unions, the best unions, are trying to organize them. They're trying to organize for union recognition and in-house uh, in employment in universities and so on. Surely our job, our job as the organized left, if you, like, if you will, in this country is to work with them to improve their conditions here. And their solidarity is part and parcel of our movement. Also, that leads us into campaigning to get the um, uh, expatriate vote to support Lula in Brazil as much as supporting AMLO and all the other left candidates all across Latin America. But I just say this, for all the history of Latin America, the, the invasion, the Spanish conquest, the oligarchs, the multinationals, the exploitation, the military coups, and all the rest of it. If you read the wonderful works of Eduardo Galeano, you'll realize that what thro flows through Latin America is that wonderful golden thread of the survival of the pre-Hispanic Hispanic languages, the culture, the environment, and the hope for the future, that understanding of the survival of the human spirit against all odds. That is what has sustained them through the most brutal dictatorships, the most horrible economic exploitation, and brought about these election victories. But they are just a step towards the real liberation of the people through socialism and through social justice. That is where our solidarity must lie. And, by the way, let's do the same here. Thank you very much.